In this video, we're going to be solving for the braking distance of a car, analyzing the forces, and using some kinematic formulas as well. We have a 700 kilogram car that's going 7 meters per second. It hits the brakes that lock up the wheels, and how far does the car travel while braking? And we have a coefficient of kinetic friction of 0 0.3. So we're going to have to use um, one or some of these kinematic formulas. And in addition, we're going to have to use some ideas with Newton's second law as well. So we know that the um, net force or the sum of the forces equals mass times acceleration. We're definitely going to have to use that. All right, so let's go ahead and start off with drawing some forces on our car. Um, as usual, we have the force of gravity pulling straight down. We have the normal force pushing up perpendicular from the surface of the road. And then also we have the force of friction going against the motion. So according to what my drawing looks like, the car is going to the right, which would mean that the force of kinetic friction would be going to the left. Now, if we're analyzing the forces, we can take a look at our vertical forces first. So if we sum up all the forces in the Y direction, we basically just have the normal force going up minus the force of gravity going down. And we know that equals zero newtons because there is no acceleration or movement going up or down, which basically means that if you add FG to both sides, that FN is equal to FG. So if we want to, we can go ahead and solve that, which is pretty simple. FG is just MG, which is just 700 times 9.8, and that equals our FN. Now in the horizontal direction, um, it works out sort of nicely because we only have a force. So if we sum up all the forces in the X direction, that is just the force of kinetic friction and that equals the mass times acceleration. We do want to leave it as MA because there is definitely some acceleration in order to slow the car down. So we're gonna have to introduce a second formula. So the um, coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force would equal the mass times the acceleration. So why don't we go ahead and plug in those actual values. We have 0 0.3 and then for the normal force, I'm gonna go ahead and write it as 700 times 9.8, even though I know it's 6,860 Newtons and you'll see why in a moment, equals mass times acceleration mass is 700 kilograms and acceleration is what we are looking for so it turns out that if we go ahead and do the algebra um, before that the 700 cancels out which means um, that the mass is insignificant in this problem so if the car is 700 800 900 kilograms it wouldn't affect the problem the only thing that affects it is the coefficient of kinetic friction Okay, if you're wondering why that is, why the mass wouldn't have any effect on it, it's because they're saying the wheels are locking up, which is actually not typical, but it's basically if you're grabbing something and you're allowing it to slide on a surface, if something is a larger, it has more inertia going in its initial direction, but it's also experiencing a greater force of friction because it has a greater FG and a normal force, so it has more um, friction going backwards because it's mu k times the normal force. For something that's smaller, it has less mass and less inertia going in its direction that it's heading in, but it has a smaller force of friction. In the end, the mass actually is insignificant. So the acceleration is basically just 9.8 times 0.3, and then that acceleration would come out to 2.94 meters per second squared. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and throw a negative in there because I know that the object is slowing down, so the net force is directed towards the left which I'll consider the negative direction because its forward direction is moving towards the right. All right, so now we actually have everything we need to go ahead and grab one of our kinematic formulas. We know that the acceleration is negative 2.94 meters per second squared. And then in addition to that, we'll need two more things because in order to use any one of these three acceleration formulas, we're gonna have to have three known variables. So we have the acceleration, we know that the initial velocity is seven meters per second. And we also know that the final velocity we are aiming for is zero because we're looking for when it comes to rest or when it comes to a stop. 
All right, now we are definitely going to use the second or third formula because those are the ones with a delta x in them. This one, we need time, and it doesn't look like we have time, so I'm going to go ahead to the third one over here, um, plug everything into this third formula, and then see what we get for our final delta x. All right, so I went ahead and plugged in all my numbers. Our final velocity is zero squared, which is just zero equals seven squared. So seven squared is 49. I subtracted 49 from both sides, which made it negative 49 on the left over here. I combined the two and negative 2.94 to make a coefficient of negative 5.88 in front of our delta x, divided both sides by negative 5.88. And then we get our final braking distance of 8.33 meters. So to sum things up, you wanna analyze the car in terms of forces first. Um, you don't necessarily have to find the normal force over here, but you definitely want to realize that the normal force and FG are the same. So then when you come over here and you have friction equal to MA, then you know that the 0.3 is equivalent to MG. Okay. It turns out that the M's actually cancel out that the mass is insignificant in this problem, but your coefficient of kinetic friction along with that 9.8 are significant. That's going to determine your acceleration. Your acceleration would typically considered negative because it's making the object slow down considering it's going in the positive direction initially. And then you're gonna grab that along with a couple more values, our VI and VF, and take those three values, pop it into this third kinematics formula over here. And then that will give you your final delta X um, of 8.33 meters. So I hope that was helpful to you. Thank you for watching and listening.